how does a pirate pay for corn? A buccaneer. <laughs> yeah, right? See? I groan inwardly. Did you hear about the guy who invented Tic Tacs? They say he made a mint. Uh, <laughs> groan. If you're not groaning, it's not a good dad joke. So I feel like that was the appropriate response. Yeah, that's good. Last Sunday was our fall festival. Oh, my goodness. We had such a fun day. And I want to show you some pictures from it. We had some great introductions and some conversations with people that were, that were so fun. Just fun to be out together. It was a beautiful sunny day. It was awesome. Kids were smiling. <laughs> that's so adorable. And the muscle twins. Yep. <laughs> Kids were smiling, having fun. They were playing games, doing activities, making spin art, getting candy. Families were sitting around these little teeny tables, eating hot dogs and popcorn, the lunch of champions with dessert of candy, chocolate milk from Smith Brothers. It was, it was, it was great. But my favorite thing about the day was our volunteers. Oh my goodness, I, I just, I kept being blown away. Saturday night, the night before, our team of volunteers showed up here, stayed late, wrestling those tents to the ground, just trying to get them, uh, trying to get them up and stable because you might remember we had a wind effect going through our area at the time. And so, man, they did such a great job. They put up the, uh, this is all Saturday night, the, the balloons, balloon arch for the, um, the photo booth, all that stuff. Then on Sunday morning, some, some of the same people, but then other, others came early to set up, and we had to move stuff out, outdoors, all that kind of stuff, get it all set up, plugged in, all that. Then and other groups of people served in the service, like right now, people like the worship band, the technology team, the hospitality team, security team, the kids teams, just all, everybody serving, serving like crazy during the service. Then after the service, we went out and served some more. And we ran those games and served food and ran the, the prayer table and parked cars and, and uh, led the activities. And then it went longer than we thought because people kept coming and it was so fun and it was so sunny and beautiful. It went so long. And then volunteers stayed again, stayed after. I, I mean, I, I really was surprised that people who had been serving for hours, they, everyone just had such a great attitude. Like that's what really impressed me. People were just grabbing, grabbing the stuff and carting it in. And man, it was so fun. It was just fun to be together. And and I just want to say I was so proud of the event. I feel like it was a quality. Uh, uh, Southeast Puget Sound uh, event, like any family would want to come to it. And I, I was so proud of you, our volunteers. I was so, so proud of Tori, our, our kids director, did such a great job championing the event. She is so organized and so fun and loves kids so much. I mean, it was just great. So I just want to say a very, very big thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. You blew me away last week in a really, really good way. Man, thank you. That was awesome. And I'm glad we got to see some pictures today. And so you know what that means. Thanksgiving in two and a half weeks. Ooh, the holidays all of a sudden are upon us. I did a little bit of research about Thanksgiving, and everyone always researches the pilgrims. Well, I, I went a little bit more recent and in the 1800s, there was a lady named Sarah Hale that was lobbying Congress, governors, the president, everybody to try to get a national Thanksgiving Day. She finally convinced President Abraham Lincoln to create an annual national Thanksgiving Day. The year was 1863, right in the middle of the Civil War, like the worst time for our country where brothers were fighting brothers. And it, right in the middle of that, President Lincoln declares and, and does this, you know, like a presidential decree that, that Thanksgiving Day shall be the third Thursday or the fi final Thursday, whatever it is, the final Thursday in November every year going forward. But on this first Thanksgiving Day, this first annual national event, he, uh, President Lincoln called us to pray for all of those who are experiencing grief and loss because of the Civil War. 
I didn't even think of associate that with Thanksgiving in the U.S. And, and he called on us to give thanks to our God. And he called on us to pray that God would heal the wounds of the nation. Isn't that a cool uh, 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 just a, a expansion? Like, I didn't know that stuff before. Uh, a, a very cool thing. And we're still continuing that on today. Uh, we're starting a brand new series today, a series, just a, a group of messages that kind of go together. It starts today uh, about thankfulness. We're calling it the power of gratitude, the power of gratitude. Gratitude to God is a very powerful thing. I have experienced even recently in my life when I have been in a bad mood or I've actually been grieving that I, I've said, there's been several times where I've said, okay, stop, Garen, stop right now. And I just began to thank God for every good thing in my life. And it is amazing how when you begin to focus on God and his goodness, Amen. all of a sudden, all those problems, all those things that feel like a loss of normalcy and everything else that we've been going through, all those things, they fade away a bit. Because gratefulness, there's a power in gratitude to God. Yeah. When you give him credit, you give him glory, you look to him. And so we're going to look in this series about what the Bible says specifically about gratitude. And, and specifically what gratitude accomplishes in your life. The power of gratitude, what it does. What it does when you are a grateful person. In 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 16, it's kind of a key verse for us, uh, 16 to 18, it says this, always be joyful. By the way, this is, this is from the Bible. Philippians is a section of the Bible. Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful. And by the way, this, this word means to give thanks, not just have a thankful attitude, but actually give thanks to God. Be thankful in not for, in all things. There's some stuff yeah. we don't give thanks for, yeah. for that thing. But even in the midst of terrible things, we can still give thanks to God because he has not changed. And that's the difference. So be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus. So that's pretty intense. It's not like just a nice idea. It's not like just, oh, this is a nice little self-help thing. This is God's will for his people. That's you and me, if you put your faith in Jesus, you're, you're one of God's people. Now, in uh, different translations of the Bible, the Bible is not written in English, so it has to be translated to get it into English, and different translators do some different things with the punctuation. Most other translators don't put periods after each verse I just read. They put a semicolon or a comma. So I, I love what uh, Eugene Peterson, his, he paraphrased this in the Message Bible, and he said, this is, this is the idea. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you, who belong to Christ Jesus, to live. Isn't that cool? I love that. But how can you be thankful to God when times are so hard? These have to be the hardest times. This has been the toughest couple of years in so many ways. Oh, my goodness. Right now, people are losing their jobs. And tensions are high. There's so much division in our country. It's interesting. Usually we, we see politically uh, division between the two parties. There is even division within parties, like major national division. There's so much division and so much fear in our world and in our country. People are understandably upset about losing some freedoms. There are some freedoms that we have had that are being taken away through force. And that is upsetting. That is upsetting. We, we thought we would always be able to go to the grocery store and get whatever we want. That's just a given, right? It's not a given right now. All of a sudden, whole categories of foods are just not on the shelf or other products, not just foods. Like, life is upside down. It is a hard season. In Acts chapter 16 is our main passage today. Why don't you turn there if you have a Bible or a smartphone. Acts 16, verses 16 to 40. Uh, and the Bible tells us about two men they were early church leaders. They were named Paul and Silas. 
And they were missionaries. But so I think maybe some of the first, not the first, but some of the first missionaries in the very, very early days of the church. And it, this, we're talking about like just a couple decades after Jesus died and rose again. All right, so way, way early. Now, Paul and Silas, these missionaries, they had been persecuted. And I don't mean like, you're a sissy. I don't mean like that kind of persecution <laughs> by, by the Jewish people who did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And they were persecuted by everybody else, the Roman citizens, because the Roman citizens stood to make a lot of money, certain, certain ones of them, from people practicing false religions, other religions, like uh, money through sales of idols that people worshipped, or money through fortune telling, or other things like that. So whenever the, the gospel comes in, whenever the good news of Jesus Christ comes in, people let those other things go. And that made, that made the Romans mad then. So everyone's mad. Everyone's perse persecuting uh, Paul and Silas wherever they go. They, they met with some of the harshest treatments wherever they went. So one day, see if this sounds familiar. Am I reading the Bible or the newspaper? One day, a riot broke out. Could be either, huh? Riots. We've seen more riots in the past couple years. Like, the world is crazy. But I just want to point out, it was crazy for them too, right. all right? So one day, a riot broke out in the Greek city of Philippi. When Paul and Silas, they, they had set a slave girl free. Now, this, this slave girl had been making money for her masters by fortune-telling. They set her free from that evil spirit. She's now a free person. Well, the masters are mad. So they, 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 they're all like, ah, they're all going crazy, looting, screaming, and they forcibly take Paul and Silas to the city authorities, which were hanging out at the local metropolitan market. Okay, the Bible says the marketplace, but I picture, you know those one cookies. Yeah, I picture that's like that was on the table. And so the officials issued an emergency executive order. And the order was strip them, beat them in public, and take them to jail. Paul and Silas, these missionaries. That was the executive order. So they, the, the policeman or whoever was carrying this out stripped them, beat them with wooden rods. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is persecution. This is not like name-calling. They beat them with rods. They took them to prison, and the jailer was commanded to lock them up in maximum security. Okay, these people, all they had done was come and me preach a message of good news, salvation, deliverance in the name of Jesus. And now they were beaten with rods, thrown into prison, and their, their feet were clamped into stocks. Don't picture New England in 1700, okay? I think it was just their feet were, were, uh, were immobile. They, they couldn't move around the cell. Um, and then the jailer laid down on a cot nearby. Okay, so now, now it's nighttime, and he's going to stay right there with those prisoners and just make sure that everything, that no one escapes. Things did not look so good for Paul and Silas because we've already seen justice as not happening. There was no trial. There was no nothing. They're just beaten, and, uh, stripped and beaten and put and thrown in jail. So they're, now they're in maximum security in the, inner, in the inner cell or the inner dungeon. So what did they do? What, what would you do? Well, the Bible says in Acts 16, 25, around midnight, so very dark part of night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Wow. Now, it's easy, especially if you have, have read, uh, read this Bible story before, it's easy to just kind of gloss over and go, yawn, oh, that's nice. They were praying and singing, so great. No, picture beaten with, with wooden rods, no trial, thrown into a, j a jail cell to rot with dampness and rats and probably everything else, no good food, all that stuff, they're in, they're in chains. They start praying, and I, I'm sure they're praying, God, use this for your glory, get us out of here if you can, if not, I, I, I mean, if, if that's your will, and if not, help us do your will, and then pretty soon they begin to think about how good God's always been, how he saved them, how he changed their life, they're no longer on the path that they used to be, and they start praising God. Their feet are chained, their bodies are bruised and, and bleeding, possibly some broken bones, I don't know, they were beaten with wooden rods. 
and they start praising the Lord. There's no prison wall that you can't break through. All that stuff. That's what they're, they're singing that to God. Wow, that is amazing. Can you imagine being thankful in a season like that? Acts 16, 26. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. Now, all the prisoners, all the other prisoners had been listening to this singing, this praising. This earthquake, a massive earthquake comes. What happens in an earthquake? I picture like Haiti or some other places where there's been recent earthquakes and like buildings crumble in. They kill all the people that are inside. It's, just, it's terrible. But this didn't happen. There was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. A prison is a restriction. It's a captivity. It's a bondage. And that, that, that act of the enemy, of the devil, was shaken to its foundations. All the prison doors, all the cell doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Okay, so we think earthquake, oh, the walls crumbled in and killed everybody. That is not what happened. The building shook violently. Prison doors swung open and the chains around their arms or feet, wherever they were chained up, fell off. It's astonishing. It's miraculous. It was a miracle of God that happened in the midst of gratitude. So this happens. Paul and Silas are smiling. They're like, oh, God, we were just singing. There's no prison wall. You can't walk through, and you just did it. This is, you're so awesome, God. We love you so much. You are amazing, God. They're just smiling. All the other prisoners had been listening to this praise fest and this prayer gathering, and I believe that the other prisoners, the Bible doesn't tell us, but I believe the other prisoners were like, what just happened? This is awesome. They're awestruck. Like, wow, this is amazing. But there was somebody there who's not so happy. That's the jailer. Jailer was scared for his life. In verse 27, it says the jailer woke up to see, because of the earthquake, to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. And remember, he had already been told, don't you let those guys escape. The prisoners had escaped. He assumed they escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. I don't know if he thought that was more honorable or if he thought that would be less painful than what they're gonna, the city authorities are going to do to me. I don't know what he was thinking. But it was serious enough for him. He knew, okay, my life's over. I'm going to end it right now. We've already seen the justice in this town. And so maybe that was on his mind. I'm, I'm not going to get a second chance here. I'm not going to get a, no one's going to listen to my story. So uh, down in verse 28, but Paul shouted to him. Remember, he just drew the sword to kill himself. Stop. Don't kill yourself. We're all here. I don't know if the, if the jailer was just like not so far away and he was able to hear that come out. We know it was kind of a dark place and everything. Or if he heard that moan like uh, the metal on metal coming out of the sheath, oh, I'm going to end it all. Or I don't know how he knew, but he, somehow he knew and he yells out, stop, don't kill yourself. We're all here. Another miracle. <laughs> okay, let's think about it. <laughs> all the, if all the cell doors opened in a local jail, they're gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, but not, not in this case. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, this is what the jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So I'm sure that the people in the town, I mean, there was a riot over this slave girl saying, these guys are here to tell everyone how to get saved by faith in Jesus. So like that's on everyone's mind. He, Paul and Silas get put in jail for it, and then this happens, and the jailer says, what I got to do? <laughs> what do I have to do to be saved? I want that, please. I want that. And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, Amen. along with everyone in your household. I'm skipping down to verse 34. And he, the jailer, and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. Wow, so much rejoicing, so much gratitude. So there, in the middle of the night, the jailer, the Bible says, cared for Paul and Silas, and he washed their wounds. It's it the best he could do to try, try to get the dirt out, the, you know, the infection out, all that stuff, because they had been beaten and chained and thrown in this dirty cell. Then Paul and Silas said, hey, there's water here. They baptized the jailer 
when you put your faith in Jesus, that's one of the first things we want to do. We want to get you baptized. That they baptized the jailer and his family at the same water source. And that water symbolized the washing away of their sins. So he had washed away the dirt. And in baptism, through faith in Jesus and the, uh, the illustration of baptism, their sins were washed away. And they were new. That night, Jesus responded to Paul and Silas' songs of gratitude with deliverance. That was the powerful thing that he did in response. There was deliverance for Paul and Silas from their prison cell. They just walked out the door. There's no way they could walk out the door. And they did. (laughs) But also there was deliverance for the jailer from death by suicide to eternal life. Yeah. He'll deliver you out of that bad thing and into eternal life. He, too, walks through the door of opportunity. And here's the, here's the message of this, of this sermon, the message of this message. Gratitude to God opens doors for you. Yeah. Gratitude to God opens doors for you. Yeah. For me, I mentioned, a door opens for me is getting out of a, out of a, out of a funky mood or out of, out of uh, feeling sad and, uh, and grieving. That's a, door, that's a door it opened for me, and I, 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 I didn't know it would. These guys, it opened prison doors. For the jailer, it opened a door to life. Gratitude to God opens doors for you. Amen. Returning back to the scripture we started with today, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to to Christ Jesus. So if you have put your faith in Jesus, you plural are the church. As Americans, we often read the Bible as if it's all to me, 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 I, 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 but really most of it's to the you plural, to to the church. If, If you put your faith in Jesus, you plural are the church. And God's will for you, he reveals here just a, a, a chunk of his will. There, there's more that God has for us. But God wants you to have an amazing life. And so this is what he wants you to do. His will. Cultivate an atmosphere of joy. In the church, in the gathering, in your life, in your home. Cultivate an attitude of joy. An atmosphere of joy. Let, let's focus on our salvation. On our eternal life. On our relationships with God and with each other. Let, let's focus on those and give God praise and thanks for those. Let's be grateful to him. And that will spur your, enjoy, your, your rejoicing. That's how we can always be cultivating an atmosphere of joy. The second thing, God said, my will for you, prioritize praying together. And I say together because the you is plural. (laughs) The verbs, all these three verbs right here, I looked them up, they're plural. So God God is saying, you guys, prioritize praying together. We always pray. We got right there, one of our core values on uh, on the wall right there. We always pray. And what does that mean? Does that mean you're always like mumbling a ritual prayer? No, that's not what it means. It's just like continually coming back to God in prayer. It's a recurring, it is a a, a constantly recurring thing, not a consistently happening thing. We're just always coming back to prayer, praying, praying, praying. We always pray. We don't give up. We always pray. And we, I don't know if you all know this, but I want to invite you. We have three prayer gatherings a week, every Sunday morning at 10. Uh, so right before service, every Sunday night in, in together nights, so we pray for each other in a, in, a sm- in a small group. And we can, we can be a little bit more um, specific then. Hey, would you pray for I need a job or whatever? We can pray for that. It's a prayer gathering. And then every Wednesday night at 6, we have an hour of power. I'm telling you what, from 6 to 7, every Wednesday night, it's amazing. Last week was, was deliverance night in our prayer gathering. It was so great, amazing teaching. We had worship where we just flowed and and just went with the spirit man it was so good we have those you're invited why would you not want to because it's so enjoyable it's so great to be in God's presence with other believers so God says cultivate an atmosphere of joy prioritize praying together and thank God no matter what happens thank him no matter what happens let let's take this month of November let's not wait for Thanksgiving day for 30 minutes after the meal to be thankful or before the meal, however, however you do it. We like to, after, after the meal, talk about uh, what God's done in our lives. Let's be thankful this whole month. Let's, let's take a month, and let's, let's, let's experience the power of gratitude in our lives. Now, you don't do any of those things 
to earn God's favor or to earn salvation. We do those things. We're, we're uh, joyful, pray all the time. We thank God no matter what happens. We do those things because we're saved, because God's in our lives, because he's, he's given us salvation. So how can you be thankful? How can you with integrity, with authenticity, how can you be thankful during one of the hardest seasons of our lives that, that we can remember? Well, another verse in the Bible, Romans 8.28, is one of my favorite verses. And I love what this says. Later, after this incident in the jail, Paul wrote, And we know that God causes everything. Someone say everything. everything. To work together. That word is collaborate. God says, you collaborate. This bad thing, collaborate. Collaborate. Work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. This is a promise for the people of God. Yeah. It's a promise for you and for me. So when it's really tough, how can you, like, oh, it's so depressing, it's so hard, it's, oh, I'm, I'm in anguish. How can you still be thankful during that time? Because you know our God has promised he's going to use even the toughest times for your good. Somehow, I don't, I don't know how, but somehow God will turn it around, he will draw meaning out of He'll, he will... Uh, for one, one good thing that he does, it's not, it's not something that, that we like pray for, but one good thing that he does is he gives a closeness to Jesus in your suffering. Amen. That's a good thing that he, he brings out of it. Jesus suffered. And when, when you suffer, all of a sudden, you just, something happens. You know Jesus a little better. And you, you, you say, wow. God, what I want you to do is take away the suffering, but I am loving getting to know you. Amen. And that is one of the good things that God does even in suffering. We trust that God's working it all out for greater glory and for his glory. Amen? Amen. Let's believe that gratitude to God opens doors for you. And let's, let's begin to look this month as, we, as we're grateful to God, as we express not just a grateful attitude, Words or actions that say, God, I am giving you thanks. Let's, let's believe for open doors. I, I, oh, who knows what he's going to open up this month? I can't wait to see. Be sure and tell someone when you see that happening. Would you stand to your feet, everybody, if you're in the room? Why don't you stand? And online, man, let, we're, we're about ready to pray. Uh, put down those games. Put down those sandwiches. Let, let's, let's focus on God for a minute. And let's pray. Would you bow your heads with me? You bow your heads and just kind of shut out distractions, prayers, talking to God, listening to God. And let's pray. Lord, we rejoice in you. You are enough of a reason. In fact, you're all the reason that we need to rejoice. We, we all just held on in 2020, just thinking if we can just make it past this, everything will be good January 1, but it wasn't. And so, Lord, instead of hanging on to uh, waiting for things to be perfect, we're going to hang on to you. I'm going to hang on to you, Lord. We, we got you, and you are enough. So help us to rejoice in you. Lord, help us to always pray. Help us to always keep coming back to pray every day, many times a day, while we're driving, while we're working, while we're in school. Help us to come back to pray and to talk to you and listen for your voice. Help us rejoice. Help us pray, Lord God. Help us be thankful. Lord, I pray that you would reveal to us the power of gratitude to you this month. I'm asking for that very specific, Lord, that you would open doors, open prison doors, take away captivity, bring freedom in areas we never imagined possible because you work and respond to and in and through gratitude to you, worship to you, praise to you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Could you just take, I wasn't planning to do this, but could you just take like 15 seconds and thank God for something? Just thank him for something specific. You can always thank him for who he is. Lord, we're grateful to you. We're thankful to you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for life. Thank you for the church that is a family and a support. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that we have had a meal to eat in the past week and other places in the world, they haven't. Thank you, Lord, that we're so grateful. There's so many things you've done for us. Praise you, Lord. We love you. We honor you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. We're going to stay kind of in atmosphere of prayer. I have one more invitation for you. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. If you've never done it, uh, this is a great day. This is a fantastic day to put your faith in Jesus. Become part of the people of God for whom those promises we've read today, uh, they're written for, for the people of God. Enter in. All you have to do, because Jesus did the heavy lifting on the cross, is put your faith in Jesus. God's free gift. Et eternal life is God's free gift to anyone who believes in Jesus for it. We're all sinners. We need a Savior. Amen. And when you come to Jesus and turn to him, he comes into your life. He forgives you. He makes you new. If you want to put your faith in Jesus today, receive salvation, receive a place in the people of God, if you're coming to Jesus today, would you just raise your hand right here in the room so I know who I'm praying for? Yes, that's awesome. That's, that's so good. And then online, would you raise your hand to God? You know I can't see you, but God can. But I am going to pray for you. So church, would you join me in, in praying? Let, let's pray for these that are, that are just giving their life to Jesus afresh. And I, I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. Would you repeat after me? Let's all pray together. Jesus, Jesus. I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I need you to save me. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now. Fill me with your spirit. Let's go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, we just celebrate with you. If you have put your faith in Jesus today, and uh, some of you may be recommitting your life, some of you may be coming to Jesus for the first time, would you let me know, let me know, me, in one of two ways. Either just get out your phone and just, just text to our phone number. Uh, text the word restart to the phone number 97000, or just tell me after service. And I, I would love to just be able to pray with you, encourage you, give you a next step. But we've got to have some contact in order for that to happen. So I encourage you to do that. God bless you. Awesome. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Well, thank you all for coming today. You know, um, and if you are new, I just encourage you, text the word GREET to 97000 just so we can stay, stay in contact with you, so we can help you, especially if you come to Jesus for the first time or if you're looking for a community where you can just spend time and grow together. Let us come alongside you in that. That's our desire is to not just leave you alone in your faith, but to walk alongside you in it and help you and guide you and be your friend. Like, I need more friends. Who doesn't? All right? All right. Um, if you are a new guest this week or last week, if you came for the Fall Festival too, we have free pizzas for you. Free Costco frozen pizza. Yeah, all right. So they are going to be in the back so you can get them as you go out. Just go talk to the person at the table. I assume there's a table. Um, also, for everyone, you have not been left out. <laughs> we have free kettle corn for anyone who wants it out in the lobby. So go grab yourself a pack. It was so good to see you all this week. Oh, the kettle corn is over there outside. They're like, they're like YMCAing over there. <laughs> it's outside the doors out here. Kettle cord for you. Um, if you could, though, um, if, we, if we could have just a couple of volunteers, we're going to set up this room for Together Night. Just stay on after. Come talk to me. We'll move some chairs. But otherwise, go have fun. God bless you. We'll see you next week.